Hey guys, welcome to the channel. This is Betty from Switch and Click and today we have something extremely special for you guys. This is an exclusive first look at the Keychron K8. We have a pre-production model here with us for the purposes of our review. This is the K8 with aluminum bezels, RGB lighting, and Gateron blue switches. We definitely would have loved to try out the hot swap one, but this was what we got our hands on and I'm pretty happy with it. And we have the K6 with hot swap, so we can talk about some of those features as well since they're very similar. But first, let's move on and do the unboxing since I feel like this should be done. So you get the box. It's a very large box. It opens up like the K6 where there's a top and a bottom. You get some foam, which is really convenient if you want to include foam into your case later on. You get your keyboard in the usual wrap that says Keychron K8. You get a dedicated dust cover for your keyboard. This one is new. Keychron has not made something like this before and it fits perfectly on your K8. We also have the keycap puller, of course. And then like all the other ones, we have our Mac and Windows extra keycaps for in case you want to swap between different operating systems. We have our quick start guide here on how to connect to Bluetooth, how to use certain features and do those things. And then we have a very complete guide and manual on different things. If you don't understand, refer to the manual. And of course we have our braided cable here. It is a USB-C cable and it ends in that angle shape because the USB-C port is on the side of the keyboard instead of the back. So that was the unboxing. Now, if you had a hot swap keyboard, it would also include a switch puller. It will include some footage of our switch puller from the K6, which we expect to look very similar to this switch puller as well. Okay, so I'm sure everyone's going to be asking about this and that is the case in particular. We'll look at the front first and it is a 10 keyless mechanical keyboard. What that means is that it's a full size keyboard without the number pad here on the right side. And that's what makes it 10 keyless. We have the aluminum bezels up top and on the side. They're super easy to take out. You just need a dedicated screw driver and we have a kit here that pretty much includes every size. It's a very small size screwdriver, but if you have a kit like that, you're bound to find the right screw to fit in. It has two on each side, so if you unscrew these two, unscrew these two, and then just slide the top and bottom off, you can take those off super easily. The entire case with the aluminum bezels weigh around two pounds, one pound, 15 ounces to be exact, and 890 grams if you use those measurements. So the side is where the USB-C port is. It has the usual buttons. One is to switch between Windows and Mac, and the other one is to switch either to Bluetooth mode, turn it off, or cable mode. And when you choose each mode, you can see the indicator lights light up depending on what mode you're in. And now for the back. On the back, we have five rubber feet. And unlike the K6 where it was flat, these are much more rounded and similar to the K2 feet. It has two dual ad angle adjustable kickstands, a shorter one and a much taller one depending on your preferences so that you can customize the angle to your typing style. All right, so the front, there is some design things that I would like to point out. With the aluminum bezels, you can see that there's some spaces on the case where it looks recessed in a little bit, including the area right above the arrow cluster, where you can really see how high the aluminum stands out. Without the aluminum bezels, this would be a floating keycap style design, 
within the case, such as the nav cluster and the arrow keys, you can still see a bit of the switches coming out just a little bit to say hello. And now the real question is the height. How high is it? Is it too tall? Do I need a wrist rest? What should you do? So we compared this to our K6 and we measured them side by side. I put the stock keycaps back on the K6 to do this measurement. This measurement is from the, from the table to the top of the keycap of the first row. So the front of the K8 measures at 32 millimeters and the front of the K6 measures at 28 millimeters. That difference is around four millimeters. And then the back of the K6 is 34 millimeters and the back of the K8 is 39 millimeters. Now, if that was a little bit confusing to you, which it can be to me, especially hearing down measurements like that, we have a complete table and side-by-side -side comparison of the K8, the K6, the K2, and the GMMK as well as another keyboard that we use, the HyperX Alloy Origins Core, and a table of measurements for your reference. We'll include that link to our blog down below where there's also an in-depth review as well if you want to read and look at pictures rather than hear me talk. So that's the case. Let's move on to the RGB effects. As usual, we'll be going through each individual effect to change the effects, as you know, there is a dedicated light button on the top right side of the keyboard. This is orange, but they also come with an included gray button. Same as the escape key, it's orange right now, but you can change it to a gray key if you'd like. But we like the way the orange pops and it makes Keychron's branding very apparent because most of their keyboards have this orange escape key. So lighting time, there are 15 preset effects that you can go through and you tr just press that light button to cycle through the effects. For the static effect, you can press FN and either the left arrow or the light arrow to change colors. You can do white, the rainbow, I believe there's red, green, blue, yellow, purple, all those different colors. Super easy to swap through. There's a bunch of effects from reactive ones to different waves to breathing. It's really up to you to find whatever you like. For me, I usually just put it on the white backlight with solid lighting anyway, so I'm pretty simple in that way. And then to change the brightness, you press Fn and either F5 or F6. It has different levels of brightness. All right, next we're going to talk about the Bluetooth. This comes with Bluetooth 5.1, which is the updated version as well as what was in the K6. We tested this on my phone and on the computer and on the laptop. On the phone, it seemed to only reach about a distance of maybe one room over. On the PC, however, we were able to go to the farthest part in our apartment away from the PC, which is about I don't know, 25, 30 feet around there. It's, it's pretty far. And I mean, why would you go to another room to be typing on your computer anyways? That makes no sense. So within the same space, everything works perfectly. So to connect with Bluetooth, you press FN in either one, two, or three. It can connect and change between up to three devices really quickly. If you already connected three devices, you just press FN and one to connect to one of them, and then to switch, you press FN and two to connect to the other one. And you can go back and forth like that really easily if you're working on multiple devices at the same time. To connect, you press FN and a number and you hold until the indicator light above the arrow cluster starts flashing blue. When it's flashing, you can connect it on your phone or PC or whatever device you're doing. And then that's it, that's it. It's connected, it's very fast and easy to connect. On Bluetooth mode, after about 10 minutes, it will go into auto sleep mode. You can turn that off. If you look at the quick start guide, let's see. You can turn off sleep mode by pressing FN, S and O for four seconds at the same time. And then after 10 minutes, it won't turn off or go into idle to save battery. That's really up to you. 
For me, I rarely use Bluetooth mode anyways. When the keyboard is in cable mode, it will shine the charging light above the arrow keys to show that your battery is charging. I believe that when it's full and the battery is charged, the lights will, that light will turn off. So the battery life has a 4,000 milliampere battery, which is supposed to last around 70 hours, depending on your usage of the lighting effects and how much you use it, how much you let it go to sleep. So your mileage may vary. So the indicators above the arrow clusters are the charging light, the Bluetooth light to, to signal whether you're ready to connect or not, and caps lock. It has secondary media features on the function row like all the other ones. They are very compatible with Mac devices and are, is probably what you're used to seeing on a Mac keyboard. In addition, because this is a TKL format, we also get some extra keys above that nav cluster. As you know, the far right one is the light key. And then we have a print screen key and a microphone key. And that microphone key is supposed to activate either Cartana or Siri, depending on what operating system you use. Keycap time. So the keycaps on this are pretty good. The RGB lighting stands out really greatly. I know I complained a little bit about the K6 and about how the legends were small and it didn't really let light through and the LEDs were weak, but this one seems to fix all of those problems. The legends are slightly thicker and it lets more shine through and the RGBs look pretty strong as well. I'll do some comparisons side by side of a K6 keycap and a K8 keycap just for your reference, um, but it looks a little bit different in real life compared to through a camera. The keycaps I believe are a little bit thicker too. They have less give in them, especially on those longer keys like the spacebar, backspace, shift, and enter. They are two-toned. We have dark gray and light gray. There's really not much to say about them. They're ABS plastic. After typing on them for a pretty long period of time, even a short period of time, you're going to see some of those finger oils on the plastic. I personally don't like that, but because this is a TKL and has a completely standard layout, you can change up those keycaps really easily with any standard keycap set that you find out there. And some of you have been worried that the right shift is 3U. It is not. It is standard. It is 2.75U. You don't have to worry about it being 3U. It's completely standard. I even checked out some of the other keycap sets that I have and chucked them on. Fits great. All right, so next is stabilizers and switches. The stabilizers come pre-lubed from the factory on its wires. There's almost no wobble. If I had the hot swap version, I would definitely clip and lube them additionally to really improve those sounds. So if you have a hot swap version of the keyboard, be sure to be on the lookout for some mod videos that we have coming up soon in the future. So they sound pretty good. This is Gateron Blues. So you're going to be hearing a lot of noise no matter what the stabilizers sound like. The switches, you have different options. There is Gateron Red, Brown, or Blue. And then you have the optical switch options of Red, Blue, or Brown as well. And then of course, if you go hot swap, you can put in any switch that you like. From our experience with the K6 hot swap, it is a five pin hot swap. That means it's pretty much compatible with all MX switches. These stabilizers are plate mounted, so they're really easy to take off by themselves. If you wanna mod the stabilizers, you just take that switch off if you have the hot swap board and then pull out the stabilizers and then mod them and then put them right back in. So overall, this is a really great looking keyboard. I know some of you are going to be concerned about the height. If you are, then make sure you grab yourself a wrist rest. Keychron sells them. We use the glorious PC Gaming Race wrist rest here. This is a 10 keyless edition. I'll link these down below as well if you're interested, but there's so many wrist rests out there. It's just up to you and your preferences. Whatever you want, it will do. 
So how do you get this keyboard? This keyboard right now is on Kickstarter. The Kickstarter is live until July 2nd, 2020. The prices range from $59 to $89. $59 being on the lower end where you only have the plastic case with a white backlight with the Gateron switches. And then $89 being with the hot swap aluminum and RGB. And then there's multiple tiers in between as well. So check that link down below if you're interested in backing this product. And remember, if you're interested in that side-by-side -side comparison with a table of measurements, you can check that out too. I know height is a big concern sometimes. So that's there for your convenience. This wouldn't be a first impressions without a typing test. So let's take it away. All right, so that was the typing test of the Keychron K8 with the aluminum bezels in completely stock form, no foam in case or anything with Gateron blues. It sounds like clicky switches, that's what it is. But other than that, if it were me and I got to really choose my options, I would go with the Gateron red with aluminum, RGB, and hot swap. That would be perfect. And that's it for our first impressions video. Stay tuned for a week or two later where we do a thorough review there and really tell you what we feel about the keyboard after using it for several weeks. Hope this video was really helpful for you guys who are looking forward to your keyboard coming to you or who are deciding whether to back it or not. If you have any additional questions, feel free to ask them down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.